Okay, so uh, today we will discuss the another theory which uh, developed the real number system through which first we have seen already Dedekind's theory how the real number has been developed with the help of the cuts, rational cuts and the Cantor's theory is another way of getting the real number system. In this theory, we are instead of taking the curse, we will definitely we will take the sequence concept, concept of the sequence is taken in consideration and then every real number will be a limit point of the sequence of the rational number. So, this way the theory has been developed and though there is some problem in this Cantor's theory, but later on we will see that basically these two theory one is given by Dedekind's other one is given by the Cantor's basically they are equivalent theories. Okay. So, let us see the uh, Cantor's theory of irrational number. Suppose we have a set S, it is an infinite set of objects, infinite set of objects, uh, some objects are there and you know. Now, when we arrange the elements of this set in the form of the series such that it has a first term and each element of this set occupies a definite position, then this arrangement is known as the sequence. So, basically what this you can say if an infinite if an infinite set of objects objects is arranged in the form of in the form of a series here series we means the sequence way okay a series which has a first term and each element and each element of the set each element of the set occupies and assign position, assign position or place. So, in other words we can also say that this uh, this arrangement this is known as and this arrangement this is known as sequence. Suppose, we take the first element from here put it as x 1 then comma let pick up any element and put it at the second place x 2 then pick up an another element put it at th third place and so on. So, each element will occupy a definite position and they are starting from the first place. So, this sequence this way we denote as a x n and is a sequence if these are rational number then this is a sequence of the rational numbers and if it is integer sequence of the integer and uh, say irrational number and like this. So, basically what we are getting is there is a one to one correspondence a sequence is a mapping which transfer s to the uh, this, uh, one set of positive integer a mapping from the set of positive integer to the element s that is corresponding to a positive integer n we have a element x n of s. So, this mapping gives a sequence and we arrange in the form of this here separated out the point then we call the sequence. Okay. So, this is what we are getting either x 1 x 2 all a 1 a 2 a whatever may be. Now, a convergence sequence of rational number convergent sequence of rational numbers. How to define rational numbers? Convergent sequence of rational numbers. 
the sequence or, or a sequence x n where the x n s are rational all rationals is said to be convergent if for a given if for a given for a given arbitrary small number f sin r given a small positive number arbitrary any positive ok very small arbitrary positive number f sin r which is a rational number a small positive rational number f sin r greater than 0 such that a sequence x n is said to be convergent for a given positive number f sin r there exist sorry there exist there exist a positive integer n not such that if there exists a positive integer n not such that the difference between the term a n naught minus a n naught plus p remains less than f sin r for p equal to 1 2 3. Then such a sequence is said to be a convergent. So, basically where this is a terms of the sequence x 1 x 2 sorry here it is x n this is this is what we are getting uh, a positive x n minus x n naught plus p this is less than epsilon for p is equal to 1 to 3. So, he, these are the terms of the sequence. We say this sequence of the rational number is convergent if for a given epsilon a rational number greater than 0 there exist an n naught such that from this term onward if I pick up any arbitrary point here the difference between x n naught and that point will remain less than f sin r. Then only we say the sequence is a convergent sequence or in other words you can say or in other words if a sequence is convergent if a sequence of rational number is convergent then then the difference between then the uh, then corresponding to corresponding to a uh, corresponding to a positive rational number f sin r greater than 0 which is small and one can choose a, a small number corresponding to f sin r greater than 0 one can find an integer n not can be found such that from n after this value after this value of n the absolute difference the absolute difference of any two elements two elements is less than epsilon so a that is in other words you can say a sequence of rational number is said to be convergent 
is said to be convergent if if corresponding to a positive relation of greater than 0 this is a given number for a given epsilon or greater than 0 there exists an integer n naught such that from and after this value the absolute difference of any two elements is less than epsilon that is the difference between a n minus a m can be made less than epsilon r for all n m greater than or equal to n naught that is the meaning of it. So, the proof of this just depends on this definition how suppose we have a sequence is given to be convergence given sequence a n uh, sequence a n is convergent ok. A sequence a n is convergent then for a given epsilon l greater than 0 there exists an n naught such that modulus of a n naught minus a n naught plus p is less than epsilon l by 2 for n is uh, greater than n naught or that is for p equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Clear? Now, consider this part modulus of a naught plus p minus a naught plus p dash. This will be less than equal to mod of a n naught minus a naught plus p plus mod a n naught minus a n naught plus p dash just subtract and adding a naught in them. Now, if this is less than epsilon l by 2 for n is greater than n naught then we can say this is less than epsilon l by 2 further we can choose in a similar way n naught is the maximum value among these then we can also take this to be less than epsilon l by 2. So, total is less than epsilon l is it not. So, difference between arbitrary term will always be less than epsilon l after a certain stage that is this is become m n this becomes m. So, this will be follows from m from m ok and in fact this n can be obtained through for m. Now, there are another properties of this convergent sequence properties of convergent sequence sequence. The first uh, property is that from and after some fixed value of n from and after from and after some fixed value fixed value of n from and after some fixed value of n all elements all the elements of a convergent sequence say a n convergent sequence a n lie between lie between two rational numbers rational numbers whose difference is whose difference is arbitrarily small arbitrarily small <laughs> what is the meaning of this step from and after some fixed value of n all the elements of a convergent sequence lies between two rational numbers whose difference is arbitrarily small so given is a n be a convergent sequence given sequence n given sequence n a convergent sequence a convergent ok given sequence n a convergent sequence. So, by definition 
for a given epsilon by definition for a given epsilon are greater than 0, there exists an n naught depends on epsilon of course, such that such that the difference between a n naught minus a n naught plus p is less than epsilon for p 1 2 3 and so on by definition. Okay. Now, in place of this I am taking epsilon by 2 because this epsilon to another number epsilon that is all. Now, the two points when you have change, uh, remove this modal sign if a naught is greater than a naught plus p or a naught may be less than a naught plus p. So, basically the a n naught plus p will lie between these two bonds a naught plus epsilon by 2 and a naught minus epsilon by 2 is it not because if suppose a naught is greater than a naught plus p then what happens uh, a naught minus a naught plus p without mode sign is less than epsilon by 2. So, you epsilon by 2 you take it this side. So, a naught minus epsilon by 2 is less than this number. Now, if this is greater than this number a naught then uh, because of the mode we can write a naught plus p minus a naught a naught which positive quantity and we get this number. So, what we get that uh, given any sequence uh, that is what uh, this result says that from and after if a sequence is a convergent sequence then from and after the value uh, from after some value fixed value of n all the elements of convergence lies between two rational number whose uh, difference is arbitrarily small. Since a naught is epsilon uh, rational epsilon l is also rational. So, we can get this to our rational. So, here it is rational given rational number. Okay. Now, if I take the difference between these two, the difference of this is epsilon. L. So, this number lies between two rational number whose difference is arbitrarily small that is what it said. Now, second property is of this for a convergence sequence. n of course, you are taking n's are rationals, rationals there exists a positive number k exist a positive number k there exist a positive number k such that mode of a n is strictly less than k or dominate or bounded by k for all values of n for all value of n. So, this is not only true for this any real number of course, we will prove, uh, hold system. So, what is says that for a convergence sequence a n and epsilon -er for a convergence sequence a n uh, there exists a positive number for a uh, convergence sequence a n uh, there exists why this a n belongs to rational yeah a n are rational then there exists a positive number k such that mod a n less than equal to k. So, every convergence sequence is a bounded sequence basically this is the for boundedness. Okay. The reason is very simple n is given to be convergent. So, since sequence a n is convergent, so for a given positive small rational number epsilon l, there exists an integer n naught such that mode of a naught minus a naught plus p is less than epsilon l for p is 1 2 3 or you can say a n naught plus p 
bit remain less than a naught plus epsilon for all p 1 2 3 for all p 1 it means the a n's are less than this number because a naught is fixed now. So, a naught plus epsilon is fixed. So, this implies that is the all terms a n this term will remain less than less than a number alpha remain less than a number alpha for all n greater than all equal to n naught is it not because all these terms are like this. So, what are the left now consider k as the maximum of maximum of a naught a 1 a 1 a 2 and a naught ok. Take the positive value absolute values and then alpha also. So, if I take the k as a maximum then obviously, this will give you. So, this will imply using the first and second we can say a n will remain less than equal to k for all k for all n that is mod a n is less than k for all k. Okay. So, this proves that this is a bounded sequence every convergence sequence of rational is bounded in fact, it is for reals also the result is 2. Okay. So, that is what we get. Now, there are certain conditions for this sequence. Okay. Uh, now, one more uh, small results is there of course, this result is third what this result says is suppose a and b n are the two convergence sequence of rational suppose a n and b n are two convergent sequence of rationals number of rationals two convergence sequence of rationals number then a value of a then a value of n can be found can be found corresponding to corresponding to corresponding to and assign an arbitrary small positive number f sin l corresponding to assign positive assign positive number f sin l such that both these difference such that mode of a n minus a n plus p is less than epsilon as well as mode of b n minus b n plus p is less than epsilon b n and b n plus n for all positive integral for all p 1 2 3 and so on all positive integral will be means a common now n can be obtained and the reason is very simple when a and b n are the two. So, a n is convergence so for given f sin l greater than 0 there exist an n 1 depends on f sin l such that mod of a n minus a n plus p is less than f sin l for all n greater than equal to n 1 is it not for all n greater than equal to n 1 on bottom that is n 1 is fixed. So, basically this we are getting n 1 all n greater similarly sequence b n is convergent. So, for the same f sin l greater than 0 there exist an n 2 depends on f sin l such that modulus of b n 
minus b n plus p remains less than epsilon null for all n greater than n 2 and p of course, 1 to 3. Then choose n to be the maximum of n 1 and n 2 okay, or say n naught maximum of this. Then what happen? 1 and 2 can it not be combined? So, 1 and 2 can together be written like this h that for a given epsilon 1 and 2 together can be written as or uh, together be satisfied as be satisfied if we choose all n greater than equal to n naught because this is true for n greater than n 1 n naught is greater than n 1. So, for all n greater than n naught also to this is also n is greater than n naught. So, if we take n greater than n naught then both the conditions uh, both the 1 and 2 in equations are satisfied. Therefore, we get this result therefore, mod n minus n plus b remains less than epsilon r as well as mod of b n minus b n plus p is less than epsilon r for all p 1 2 3 that is what is ok. So, this so, these are few properties of the convergence sequence of reaction numbers. Now, before going for the convergence sequence, what are the we also developed some criteria to judge whether the given sequence is a convergent or diverging. Okay. <coughs> so, the criteria for the convergence, the criteria for testing the convergence. of sequence of rational numbers let it be okay we are all dealing with the rational first so we don't if the sequence a not a first criteria a, if the sequence an is such that from and after such that from and after some fixed some fixed element each element each not greater than not greater than the following one is not greater than the following one and if and if all the elements are Are less than some fixed number k. Something then sequence n is convergent sequence. Convergent. So what this says is, if a sequence n is such that from and after some fixed element, each element is not greater than the following one, each element is not greater than the following one. It means that after say n naught, uh, if I take uh, sequence a 1, a 2, a n naught, a n naught plus 1 and so on. This is our sequence and suppose after this n naught, what it says? each element is not greater than the following one means a n naught is not greater than a n naught plus 2 it means a n naught is less than a n naught plus 2 ok a n naught is less than a n naught plus 2 which is less than a n naught plus 3 and like this and if all the elements are less than some fixed number k 
if all the elements are less than say k, then the sequence will be convergent. For example, suppose I take this say half 1 by 4, 1 by 8 like this. Now, this sequence is such that each element is not greater than the following one means half. So, this is not greater than so 4 is uh, 4 is not greater than no it is wrong number. So, we will take okay, no we should take half 3 by 4 let us take 3 by 4 then 7 by 8 and then 15 by 16 let us take this example. If we take this example then what happens is the first term is half second term is 3 by 4. So, 4 and this 6 it means this is like this it is half is less than 3 by 4 7 by 8 is it not less than like this okay? like this. So, each term element is not greater than the following one this is not greater than this number in like and all the terms of the sequence are bounded by some number k all the terms are less than 1 you see because this sequence is basically what n minus 1 by n type in fact it will not be like this n minus 1 because the difference is something coming to be 1 2 4 6 is it 2 n 2 to the power n and here it will come something else. But the denominator is lower than the one term lower than the numerator the uh, numerator is one term lower than the denominator one unit. So, we are getting this and each will dominate less than equal to 1. So, if this sequence will converge and converge to 1. Now, proof is like this why it is so since a n sequence is such that from and after some term each element is not greater than the following one and if all the elements are less than fixed number then a n converge. Suppose this is not converge. Suppose the sequence a n is not convergent it is a diverging sequence then we will lead, it will lead a contradiction. So, if it is not convergent then there exist uh, it then there exist some positive number there exists some positive number delta such that such that an indefinite number of the increasing values such that uh, uh, and infinite number infinite number of infinite number of increasing values of n by infinite number of increasing values of n naught n 1 n 2 and so on can be found can be found for which the difference mod a n 1 minus a n naught is greater than all equal to delta mod a n 2 minus a n 1 is greater than equal to delta and so on so forth. Let us see why it is so when the sequence is convergent. So, according to the definition a sequence is convergent means the difference between a n and a n plus b is less than epsilon l means whatever the uh, howsoever small epsilon l is choose one can always identify a n 1 such that from this term onward the difference can be made as small as we please if it diverges. Diverges means that the difference should not be should not go to 0. Okay. It keeps on increasing 
if the difference keeps on increasing then the sequence will be a diverging sequence. So, here we are what we are saying if suppose this is not a convergent. So, let us see the contradiction part of it. So, what we are saying is that we can find out a uh, number delta for a given some number delta can be identified and a sequence n 1 n 2 n a number delta and a sequence n 1 n naught n 1 n 2 and so on such that which is increasing nature n 1 is less than n 2 less than n so on and it goes to infinity of course, all integers all positive integers. So, there exists a delta greater than 0 and a sequence of and positive integer which have increasing nature such that corresponding to this sequence the terms corresponding to this term we have having the term a n 1 minus a n a n 1 a n naught a n 2 etcetera. If I take the difference between these two a a n naught a n 1 a n 2 and so on. If I take the difference of these two difference of these two and like this difference of these two this should be greater than equal to 0. It means the difference between two terms can never go to 0 because it is always be greater than equal to delta. So, that is why that sequence will not be convergent it will be a diverging one. So, criteria for diverging is that if a sequence diverges we can also write in a form that for there exists a positive number delta such that the uh, there will be a sequence and not an in increasing sequence of integer such that the difference consecutive difference of the term will be greater than equal to that positive number delta. Okay. So, if it is so then what happened is if suppose a not n 1 n 2 n are the corresponding a n 1 n not etcetera if a n 1 is greater than a n not a n 2 is greater than a n 1 say then from here we can say a n 2 let it be greater than a n 1. Okay then what happens is we can write this thing as from here we can write a n 2 is greater than equal to a n 1 plus delta, but a n 1 from is also greater. So, this is further greater than equal to a n naught plus 2 delta like this. So, if I continue this then a n r is greater than equal to say first term a n naught plus r delta this we get it, but what is given is the given is that uh, further it is given if all the elements are less than the fixed number k means all the elements of this this is given all the elements of a n are less than the fixed number k are less than some fixed number k for each n this is given, but here we are getting a n r is greater than a naught plus r plus delta a naught plus r into delta. Now, if I choose r to as infinity r tends to infinity then this a naught can exceed any value whatever. Suppose I take k then it will definitely exceed this a n r will definitely exceed k because of the term r is going to infinity. So, this value can be as large as we can as you imagine. So, this will be all violated. So, this condition condition 1 and condition 2 are contradictory. So, as r tends to infinity it contradicts it contradicts the fact that a n's are less than k for all n and this contradiction is reached because our wrong assumption that sequence it not convergent therefore, our sequence a n is convergent. Okay. So, that is the work but. So, this is the first criteria that if the terms of the sequence are basically all of increasing in nature this is the increasing in nature these terms are increasing in nature, but it is dominated it is bounded upper bounded by some number k then such a sequence will be a convergence. So, in other words also we say a sequence which is a monotonically increasing sequence and bounded sequence then it must be a convergent sequence. Okay. So, that is what is the second criteria says
if the sequence if the sequence a 1 a 2 a 3 and so on a n is such that is such that from and after sum and after some fixed element fixed element each element is each element is not less than each element is not less than the following one following one and if all the elements are all the elements are greater than some fixed number small k small k then the sequence is then the sequence a n is a convergent sequence ok. So, what is this sequence what we are getting is if we have a 1 a 2 a 3 a n etcetera these are the terms of the sequence and this satisfy the condition from and after some fixed element say a naught each element is not less than following one it means a naught is greater than a naught plus one greater than a naught plus two greater than and so on means after this the terms are of decreasing nature this is of decreasing nature and not only this if they are decreasing later, but all the elements of this are greater than some number means they are not decreasing they are decreasing to some number greater than all equal to k greater than some fixed number small k greater than small k the terms are of decreasing but it will decrease and it will not cross the k so if all the terms are of after certain stage are of decreasing nature and uh, after certain stage if all the elements are greater than suffix number then such a sequence will be a convergent one. So, it is basically lower the sequence is bounded below when n is sufficiently large it is bounded below by k because the terms are not going beyond this lower than this. So, it is bounded below by k but and why it is after some uh, term onward because these first few terms they does not effect the convergence or divergence of the sequence. If the limit of the sequence is convergent that is the limiting value is some finite quantity then whether these first few terms are uh, very large or maybe the infinity we would not care for it because as n is sufficiently large the behavior of the convergence sequence is tested. Okay. So, that is why the first few terms even they does not behave which does not satisfy this criteria maybe the few term a 1 is less than a 2 a 2 is greater than a 3 hardly matters, but after certain stage if all the terms of the sequence follow this criteria either they are decreasing or they are increasing if it is decreasing then all these terms also should be greater than k and if it is increasing then all sort will be bounded by k then in both the case the series will be convergent and the proof is just follows in the previous line we have seen that a n naught a n naught minus a n 1 is less is greater than assuming that this is diverging assume sequence a n is diverging divergent then there there exists a delta and a sequence of the integers n not n 1 into n increasing sequence such that a n not minus a n 1 is greater than delta a n 
1 minus a n or a n 2 minus a n 1 is greater than delta and so on. So, greater than or equal to half. Okay. So, from here if a n 1 is greater than a n 0 or a n 2 is greater than a n 1 etcetera, we can write from this uh, say negative side. So, we what we can do is we can put it a n r can we say that a n r <coughs> this can be written as uh, less than or equal to a n naught minus r, r delta why because a n naught is greater than a n 1 a n 1 is greater than a n 2. So, from here if I take the reason is because from here if I take we get a n 1 minus a n 2 becomes positive because a n 1 a n a naught is greater than a n 2 is it not. So, a n 1 is greater than a n 2. So, a n 1 minus a n 2 will be positive. So, this is greater than delta. So, this shows a n 2 is less than a n 1 minus delta. Similarly, here if I take substitute a n naught then this will come a n naught minus 2 delta and continue this we get this term. Now, as r tends to infinity then this number r delta will be very very large when r is sufficiently large this number is very large a naught is a fixed rational number. So, when you subtract uh, from a naught a very large number then obviously, the quantity will definitely exceed by k cannot be greater than k cannot be greater it will always be less than k for large enough. So, this will contradict the whole thing that all the terms of the sequence are greater than k which is not satisfied. Therefore, a contradiction contradiction is obtained and this contradiction is because of a wrong assumption that is therefore, the sequence a n is convergent. Okay. So, this criteria and the sequence which I already given one example the in fact that was the uh, example for this half 1 by 4 is it not 1 by 8 and so on. So, what happened is this half is greater than 1 by 4 greater than 1 by 4 is greater than this and like this clear. So, this will be like this and this will be always be greater than 0, this is always greater than 0 some positive quantity. Okay. So, which convergent this one. Now, once we have the converge concept of the convergence sequence then similarly just like a cuts we have already added the two cuts and how to um, combine this multiply the two cuts here also we can have a similar type results the addition of the multiplication of this. So, few result which will be used the first result is if a n and b n a n b n be two convergence sequences convergence sequences the sequence a n plus b n and a n minus b n in which the elements are the sum are also convergent are convergent. Okay. And this uh, um, proof is very simple just we wanted the a n plus b n and minus b n to be convergent. So, what we do is since a n b n are convergent since sequence a n and b n are convergent. So, for a given f signal greater than 0 there exist an n naught such that mod of a naught minus a naught plus p is less than epsilon y 2 for as well as mod of b n naught 
minus b n not plus p less than f sin l y 2 for p equal to 1 to 3 because we can find a common term as we have seen. Now, consider consider mod of a n plus p a n plus b n not minus a n not plus p plus v n not plus p. Now, this will be less than equal to mod a n not minus a n not plus p plus mod b n not minus b n not plus p and this is less than f sin l by 2 this is so this is less than f sin l by 2 this is less than so this is less than f sin l for all p 1 2 3 therefore the sequence a n plus b n is convergent okay similarly we can show that a n minus b n is also convergent in a similar way okay the second result is about the product if a n b n are if a n b n are the two convergence sequence then if a n b n be two convergence sequences then the sequence a n into b n n into b n are also con is also convergent sequence is convergent sequence similarly when you go for the division if a n by n by b n will also be provided the b n is greater than some number k. So, proof we will see next time thank you very much ok thanks clear. So, let us stop it here and the proof we will go next time thank you very much.